How are we getting on, folks? Look at today in Punchestown is a bit of a write-off. I don't really know what to make of it. It was very hit and miss. We got more misses than hits. But I suppose Cheltenham did pay us back. We had three lovely winners. Um, the first two, I can't even remember what they were, but three to one, two to one, and eight to one in the last race. Um, for the Noel Feely setup, it was a very, very impressive winner. But uh, overall, look at we we'd have been lucky now to to break even altogether there to now, now today. We probably would have made money in Cheltenham, but certainly lost it in fair or Punchestown. All right. Uh, Fairy House tomorrow definitely looks to be a very interesting card. Plenty of each way shouts. And uh, Cheltenham, there is definitely some very, very big each way shouts. I wouldn't necessarily be going head over heels now with my Cheltenham selections tomorrow. But there is some very big prices here that can run a very, very big race. Uh, first of all, we're going to cover Fairy House more so than Cheltenham. Uh, 11.30, we are going to go with Jessica Harrington's Ilmig here now at even money. Look, it, 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 it's... It certainly looks to be the the more likelier winner out of this field. It's not really meeting anything of any great standard. Uh, it's rated 131 over hurdles. It was a very, very impressive second la last time out. And it should be very hard to beat. In my personal opinion, I think it should be a very, very comfortable winner. Uh, next race then, the 12 o'clock, I'm going to go with the Great, the great White. I was going to say the Great White Shark there for a minute. The Great White. Uh for Durham and Lachlan, currently priced around five to one, as an each way bet, more so than anything else. Look at it; it's been unlucky. It was supposed to be running in Punchestown last time out. Uh, that was the day when the fog just kicked in, and it was actually the next race it was supposed to be running in when it was heavily punted into favoritism, and it just didn't get to run. It's at a nice mark. It should be well capable of running up to some sort of standard. It's meeting nice, nice enough ground for it. Uh. It, what I mean by that is it's going to handle the ground basically and it should be able to put in a very very good race I think 5-1 to one is a generous each way shout 12.30 then we are going to go with Noel Mead's Night Combat here at 12-1 to one. this one here definitely looks very very interesting uh, it was a poor enough debut uh, over hurdles there last time out but when you go back one race to down Ryan and you look at that form of that bumper you have Sir Gerhard obviously won it. Uh, he's the favourite for the champion bumper and more than likely going to be the champion bumper winner. Uh, you had the Banger Dial who won there today in Punchestown. Uh, who was the next one then? Oh, and I tipped it up as well. Third in was I can't remember who it was, but it was a winner last a winner not maybe last time out, but after the after that particular race. And um, then in fifth, behind this uh, night combat, there was another one that ended up going over to Musselburgh next time out and ended up winning there. So the form of that bumper is hot. It's very, very hot. It's almost scalding me. It's so hot. <laughs> but uh, look, at 12 to 1 is a very, very generous price. I think the bookies are... Focusing too mo much on the, the first run over hurdles, which look at it was sloppy, but it, it, it's a baby at the end of the day. It it it's going to be sloppy enough first time out unless it's an absolute superstar. But it doesn't necessarily meet anything of Sir Gerhard's standard or what we think Sir Gerhard is going to be like. Uh so it should be able to run a very, very decent race, and like I said, the form of that race has produced more winners than losers. That's one thing for certain. Uh, next race then, the 102. It's a patron uh, tip, so we're not going to discuss it too much. Uh, 137, we are going to go at half shot at 13 to 2 each way. This one here certainly looks to be a very, very nice shout. It was a very good third in Limerick last time out in heavy ground. It was a very good front runner. Just seemed to die off a little bit in the end, but... It should still be well capable of putting up a very good run and it should be one of the ones to set the pace. It'll set a good pace at that and hopefully it'll, I suppose, what's the word I'm looking for? It'll mature a little bit, to, to jump a little bit better and to, I suppose, just travel with a little bit less lunacy more so than anything else. Um, next race end at 2.12. We are going to go with Size and Potsy here at 7-2. It's a hot race. It's hard to really know what this 
sort of standard is going to be like. It was a very good second last time to... I'm trying to think. It was it Felix Deji last time it finished to... Uh, I think that was in... Where was it? It was... It was Punchestown, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken. It was either Punchestown or Fairy House. Um, yeah, I think it was Punchestown. Uh, it was second to... But I suppose going away from the rambling on, it, it, it certainly looks to be the more likelier ones. Uh, it's coming in here off a similar mark to the second last time out when it looked like it was actually going to win that particular day. But um, most of these are coming in being raised, raised, I suppose, a bit of weight and coming in here out of the handicap more so than anything else. So they're... They're putting themselves already at a disadvantage before they even race at all when that's the case. But Sites and Potsy should be well capable of winning this. And look at it, it's a nice price of 7 to 2. I certainly think it is a great, great shout. Uh, 2.47, then we are going to go to Port Stanley here for the Jessica Harrington team. Uh, this one here is coming in at 6 to 5. Look at it, it's a short enough price. But overall, it certainly looks to be one of the more likelier ones. Um. I think Sean O'Keefe is partnered up with it today, so it should be well capable of running a very good race. Certainly likes the heavier ground. It, it's run plenty of great bumpers in, in heavy ground uh, last Christmas, and the, I think it was running the Christmas beforehand as well. But regardless of that, whatever way it was going, it, it's a generally sound, decent bumper horse, and it should be well capable of running a very, very good race. Finally then, the 3.22, we are going to go with a no bet here. Brandy Love should win this. Uh, coming from the Willie Mullins yard, I don't think there's anything in here to really trouble it. It should be a very, very good, decent sort of a horse. And I think it costs something like 200000 to uh for the the new ownership. So, look, it, it should be well capable of running a very, very good race. And potentially a very, very decent standard, more so than anything else. Uh, now moving on to Cheltenham then uh, the 12 5 we are going to go at with Adagio at 11-10 this one here certainly looks to be one of the more likelier ones look at it it was a, it was a very very good second here last time out um, look it, it, it just needs to really jump better which it nearly should do now it, it should be very very hard to beat I'd, I'd imagine that it should be a very strong favourite and like this it should maybe even go into odds on but the value is still there, 11 to 10. Uh, if it wins, you're doubling your money. That's the best way to go into any any sort of a race day. Uh, 12.40 then, no bet here. Chantry House should be well capable of winning this particular race, 4 to 7. I'd imagine so. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We're not having a bet, so there's no point talking about a horse that's going to probably win anyway. 115. Very, very big each way shout here now with this one. Gino Trail coming in at 33 to 1 certainly does catch my eye. You just look at the form that Fergal O'Brien is in. Uh, he's won this off this particular mark in February in, I think it was Doncaster that particular day. I might be totally wrong with that, but I think it was Doncaster that particular day. Uh, similar mark, actually, same mark off. Um, it's running off here now t today. It, it's certainly. <sighs> A bit of a lunatic. He he goes from the front and he just eats up the fences. He just nearly runs through them more so than anything else. But uh, just the fact that he's coming from Fergal O'Brien's yard, it's in serious, serious form. I still think he's worth a small, small each way. It's a very hot race. And there are a number of these that are creeping up in the handicap. And people might be looking past Gino Trail's age now, but there could be life in the old dog yet they're as simple as that it, it certainly looks to be a nice each way and 33 to 1 is a lovely lovely price uh, 150 then this is another patron tip so we're not going to spend any time on this particular race uh, 225 I'm going to go and make good at uh, 7 to 1 each way certainly looks to be a nice sort for uh, John McConnell it was a very very easy winner last time out in where was it I think it was down Royal um I could be totally wrong with that. It's it's just slipped my mind where he ran, but um or was it Punchestown? It's one of the two anyway. I, I I can't remember where he was running, but uh it was a very impressive winner, won by something like twenty odd lengths that particular day. It was a very, very impressive winner. It just absolutely hosed up. Uh should be well capable of running a very decent race as well. Obviously John McConnell got the got the uh cross country winner there today uh sorry for ben harvey uh for 
what you call it, getting the ban. It was very unfortunate for your first Cheltenham winner, but look, at, I, I'm sure he, I'm sure that's the least of his worries now. He's just delighted he got his Cheltenham winner. Um, now next race, then we are going to go at Goshen as a no bet at seven to four. It, it, look, at, if he turns up like Goshen that we know. He's going to absolutely sluice up here. He's going to make bits of the field and he's going to absolutely make ribbons of great horses. But 7-4 to four is a little bit short for me. I just don't really think that he has got any sort of a outstanding chance. He does have a great chance, but he doesn't necessarily have an outstanding chance that he deserves to go off in or around 7-4. to four. I'd just rather sit back and watch him and just watch a superstar run. Rather than getting head over heels behind him at seven to four, it's just a little bit of short for my liking. Finally, then the three thirty five. I am going to go with Eglantine de Soul, or whatever way you want to pronounce it. Uh, the twenty eighteen, I think it was the the. It was actually Noel Feely's last ride, uh, and last winner in the twenty eighteen festival in the Mayor's Novice. Uh, obviously when Winnie Mullins was in charge of our but. Look at it. It's it's an interesting move. It, it's certainly it's certainly going to stay this trip, and it should be well capable of running a fairly decent race. Like, it's definitely a horse horses for courses, and it's it's definitely won around Cheltenham here, uh, before. So it should be well capable of running a very decent race. Harry Copton takes the ride for Paul Nichols. Obviously, look at Harry Copton is possibly the favourite now for champion jockey this year. Uh, and he certainly has great firepower behind him. Uh, if Eglantine Desai turns up like she did in the 2018 festival, she should be very, very hard to beat. Mark my word on that. And 8 1 is a great each way shout. But I'm going to leave it there. I leave a link in the description below for the patron. Uh, if you want to get behind us, uh, we are, I suppose, doing daily tips to try and fund the, the podcast that we're doing. The podcast. The podcast that's going up on Sunday is going to be very, very good. We're only after recording it there tonight. Uh, and I think it's definitely the best one yet. It's only the three of us, but we're just talking about the racing gone by and talking about the racing coming ahead. And there's definitely some great, I suppose, shouts coming up for it. Uh, please make sure to keep liking, and sharing, and subscribing. If you haven't done so already, go over to the Irish Racing Corner. And as well as that, go over to my friends in uh, the race or racing records and subscribe to their channel as well. It'd great it'd be great to help them out as well as trying to help out the Irish Racing Corner. Um or I think it's the Irish Racing Hour on YouTube. Yeah, it's the Irish Racing Hour, so please make sure to do that for me. It only takes a second, but it helps us out big time at the end of the day. And um yeah, if you're gonna be having a bet tomorrow, the very best of luck. Uh, thanks very much and uh, best of luck tomorrow.